I'm sorry, Dave. I don't have enough information. The clock pendulum is a mesmerizing kinetic form of artwork which has adorned walls and offices for centuries. But it's not just for beauty. It's there to regulate the time and make sure that the clock is running accurately. The pendulum's use in time regulation began with Galileo in the late 1500s and early 1600s. As a student in the University of Pisa, he first noticed the swing of a chandelier and the rhythmic motion and the consistency that it had. Galileo discovered that a pendulum took the same amount of time to swing back and forth if it had a small arc or a large arc. In his later years, Galileo designed the first machine which would take the swinging motion of the pendulum and convert it to a time regulator. The pendulum would swing back and forth. At the top of the pendulum, two pallets were connected to the pendulum rod and they would swing back and forth in unison. As the escape wheel would try to spin, the pallets would catch and release the pins on the escape wheel using the regulation of the pendulum to control the speed of spin of the escape wheel. Galileo's escape wheel and pallets were used in virtually all clocks until the mid-1950s, such as in this international time recording movement which we'll take a closer look at. The escape wheel and pallet combination can be found inside this International Time Recording Master Clock and virtually all other pendulum clocks used for several hundred years. But if the time is always constant for a pendulum to swing back and forth, what about the size of the arc or the amplitude of the arc? What dictates that? Why is this clock at three inches of arc while others are at four or five inches of arc? Let's look into it. We'll begin by running a series of tests on this international weight-driven master clock. At the start of testing, this clock has a 3.1 inch arc, or amplitude, of the pendulum. By adjusting the verge up or down, as is capable on international movements, I was able to see a 0.2 increase in the arc of the pendulum. By re-oiling the movement pivots, I was able to see a 0.05 inch increase in the arc, very insignificant. When I added 3.2 ounces of fill to each one of the vials, the amplitude did decrease, but only by 0.05 inches again, relatively insignificant. And finally, I decreased the weight of the drive weights uh, 3 pounds on each side from 11 pounds per weight to 8 pounds per weight and that ended up in a amplitude reduction of 0.5 inches significant. So my conclusions from this first test are that the drive force, either the weight on the uh, drive weights or the spring, has the major impact on the amplitude, but the verge adjustment can also have a significant impact on the amplitude. For test number two, I'll use this international weight-driven master clock made in 1942 with all original equipment and we'll focus on the movement. At the start of the test, this clock also had a 3.1 inch arc of the pendulum and uh, the movement was sluggish. The first change I made was to install a recently overhauled but identical movement into the clock which resulted in a one and a half inch increase in the arc of the pendulum. Next I reinstalled the original movement but only after cleaning it with an ultrasonic cleaner and drying it completely, no lubrication however. I removed the original movement gave it a light lubrication and reinstalled it, resulting in a 0.1 inch increase in the arc. Small change. And finally, I reinstalled the hand train as well as several of the contacts for the master clock to put some resistance on the movement and that resulted in an amplitude decrease of 0.4 inches. My conclusions from test number two are a major overhaul or refurbishing of the movement does have a major impact on the amplitude, but a cleaning and an ultrasonic cleaner really does produce a significant increase as well. In summary, there are many things that you can do to adjust the amplitude of a pendulum, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful piece of artwork, but also an engineering masterpiece, thanks to Galileo and his creativity 400 years ago. Thank you for watching.
goodbye.